Hello everyone. Apologies for not being with you in person at Open Repositories 2012 in beautiful Edinburgh, Scotland. However, my non-attendance simply underscores the importance of my session today, highlighting my experiences conducting the various DuraCloud web seminar series. For those of you who I, who I have not met, my name is Carissa Smith. It's very nice to e-meet all of you. Very few people like to hear themselves talk. But for participants of webinars, training sessions, and demos, recordings of these types of sessions serve as valuable resources that can be referenced, shared, and repurposed. Not to mention the fact that coordinating the schedules of the key people who should attend these sessions when they are being conducted real-time is oftentimes difficult, if not impossible. Therefore, providing an integrated recording to participants afterward that can easily be watched at a time convenient to the viewer without requiring a particular piece of proprietary software to be installed beforehand is essential. As the main speaker for a web presentation, it is important to make sure that your environment is properly set up before getting started. And by before, I mean testing every aspect at least a day ahead uh, in, a, in advance of your session not 15 minutes before you are scheduled to conduct your session. Procrastination in these web event situations increases the likelihood that something will go wrong. One of the most important pieces of equipment that you should invest in when conducting a webinar is an integrated headset that includes a noise-canceling microphone that I'm using right now. Nothing is more aggravating to web event attendees than copious amounts of background no noise. No one needs to hear your nearby coworkers' weekend activities, nor the coffee maker in your office brewing that cup of coffee for after you complete the session. Additionally, make sure that you have adjusted your chair and desk so that you are comfortable to sit for at least an hour without fidgeting. Again, participants cringe when they hear presenters moving around in their chair or moving items around on their desk. It just adds another audio distraction and takes away from the real message you are trying to relay to the audience. If time permits, I highly recommend doing a full trial run of your presentation, demo, or discussion several days before the live event. If possible, attempt to recreate the exact environment that you will have the day of the live event, including, including using the same webinar software for the dry run. Be sure to memorize uh, hitting record and the other buttons that are available to you. If you are an overachiever, attempt to record your trial run to ensure that the recording of your session will also come out crystal clear. By listening to the recording, you can make further adjustments to the volume of your microphone as well as to the content and cadence of your speech. I highly recommend listening to a pre-recording uh, just to make sure your content is, is also accurate. About an hour before your event is live, log into the web platform that you will be using and conduct one last thorough test of your setup, including slides, screen sharing, as well as audio quality. I found it helpful to enlist a fellow coworker to moderate as well as run technical support in the background so that you can focus on the presentation itself. It's important when conducting any sort of web event that you pay attention to the speed and cadence of your voice. Since you do not have the luxury of reading the audience member's facial expressions, channel your inner Morgan Freeman, James Earl Jones, or Sigourney Weaver to be sure and be sure to enunciate and speak slightly slower than normal. Right before you start your session, do not forget to hit the record button. This important step only takes a few seconds, but it is the critical step before starting your session. The worst case scenario is that you forget to hit the record button of the live session and have to conduct another replica session later on that day for the purposes of recording. What you lose is getting the question and answer session recorded. Before starting your presentation, it is best to assess the format that it will take and whether whether, when, and how you will entertain questions from the audience. I've found that the chat feature in most web platforms is a perfect avenue for taking questions. It's personal preference whether you take, take questions throughout the session or hold them until the end. Regardless, be sure to explain the format and expectations at the beginning uh, to your audience members. As mentioned before, an integrated headset is one of the most important pieces of hardware to own when conducting web events. Some examples of reliable headsets that I've had experience with include the Sennheiser that you see on your screen, Plantronics Audio, as well as Logitech headphones. When it comes to webinar platforms, not all are created equal. However, each of the following platforms are very popular, relatively easy to use, and most importantly include a built-in integrated recording capability. They are Audio, uh, Adobe Connect, WebEx, and also GoToWebinar. Depending on your platform, you have several different recording tools at your disposal if you decide not to use the integrated recording feature available in most webinar platforms. For Mac users, I highly recommend QuickTime, which allows for audio, video, and integrated recording. For PC users, Cam Studio is an open source software 
option that allows you also to very easily create uh, recordings from your machine. And I'm actually using Quick Studio, uh, excuse me, QuickTime right now. Assuming you followed many of the steps outlined uh, previously, you simply need to do a quality control check on your recording after you've completed your web session. One decision you may wish to make is whether you want to cut out the question and answer session or if you wish to keep it included in the recording that you, that you make available to the public. Again, this is a matter of personal preference. Once you've watched and listened to your recording, it's time to upload it to the distribution channel of your choosing. I highly recommend YouTube because of its pervasiveness, ease of use, as well as its straightforward searchability. Simply create a YouTube account to get started. After creating an account, simply upload your video to YouTube. Be sure to include an, an appropriate title and description, as well as useful tags for the video. Assigning the proper copyright or Creative Commons license is also important. Lastly, after the video has uploaded, be sure to do one last quality check to make sure that both the video and audio play is expected in the YouTube player. If you intend to conduct more than one web event, I also highly recommend creating a YouTube channel so that your audience will not only have access to the entire suite of recordings, but will come to expect new additions to the collection and will check back often, even if they are not able to attend the live events. This is a really great archive for all of the recordings of your, of your web events. Since I'm almost out of time, I'll end with a simple note. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about this session or feel free to watch the recording again, and it will be available at youtube.com slash user slash DuraCloud videos. Thank you all.